What exactly is string interpolation and how can we use it to make our Power Apps formula writing easier? I'll break down this brand new functionality right after this. Now, first up, why am I talking about string interpolation? Well, you might have saw this blog post released on Monday, April 25th, 2022 by Greg Lindhorst. He announced some new functionality for Power Apps, Canvas Apps, or Power FX for string interpolation. So what do we mean by string interpolation? Well, it's a commonly used feature of many traditional programming languages like C Sharp. So if you come from a background of traditional programming, you've probably heard of string interpolation before. Now, when we break this down, all it really is is the ability to embed formulas within a text string. Now, you might be asking, April, don't we already have that capability with, say, the concatenate PowerFX function or the ampersand operator? Now, with PowerFX being based off of Microsoft Excel formulas, we do have those capabilities to use concatenate and the ampersand operator. String interpolation, though, gives us a different way to accomplish the same end means. And the reason we might consider using this string interpolation approach rather than say concatenate or the ampersand operator is honestly, it's a little bit easier to read. And if you're wondering why Microsoft has added this capability into PowerFX, it really ties into their goal of being able to use PowerFX more broadly across the different Power Platform applications. So it started off really just using it within our Power Apps Canvas applications. The goal being to be able to use this more broadly across the Power Platform stack. And actually some of the other products within the Power Platform are already using this string interpolation functionality, say like Power Virtual Agents. So it makes sense to offer this in PowerFX so that we can use that amongst the different products and really try to standardize the implementation there. So what does this look like and how does it work? Let's take a look. Let's start off with a really common example. I'm going to add in a label control and maybe I want to add a welcome message to the current logged in user. To do that, before we had string interpolation, I would do it this way. In quotes, I would hard code the message welcome, close out those quotes, and I might use, say, the ampersand, and I would use our user function at this point and get maybe user.fullName. And then if I wanted to end with an exclamation point, I might do another ampersand and in double quotes, put in the exclamation point. The other way that I could write this would be with the concatenate function. So I could say concatenate in quotes welcome, then call the user function dot full name, and then finally add in that exclamation. And that would give me the same outcome. Now string interpolation, how we do it that way, is if I comment out that line there, is we simply put a dollar sign before we want to do any of this kind of concatenation or manipulation of our strings. So what I mean by this is when we want to mix and match hard-coded text and dynamic values from our Power Apps application. So in the case that we have here, I want to mix in the hard-coded text of welcome with a dynamic value of the current logged in user's name. So I can put in our dollar sign, put in a double quote to start my string. Now I can simply type in welcome. I can do a space because it will recognize the space there and in curly brackets, I can put in my dynamic values. So in this case, I only want the full name so I can type in user dot full name, close the curly bracket, put in my exclamation, close out the quotes there. And now if I shrink out my formula bar, you see we have the welcome message using the string interpolation approach. I personally love this string interpolation functionality because it is much cleaner than using say the concatenate or the ampersand and to me it's easier to read. So really the basics here are very simple. As I said, we can use this for a multiple of use cases where we want to combine dynamic properties and hard-coded properties inside a string like this. So we just put the dollar sign in quotes and then in curly brackets our dynamic properties. So let's look at a separate example here. So in the gallery below, I have two items for our issue reporting list. I'm going to add another label in here. And maybe I want to include a message that says you have X and get the amount of items in this gallery. We can use the string interpolation approach for that. So in our formula bar, so we'll put in our dollar sign. We'll do an open and a close double quotes because everything that we have in the string interpolation method here needs to be within the open and the closing double quotes. I'm going to hard code in some text. So I want to say you have, 
And then after this, I want to dynamically pull in the total count of the items in the gallery. So I can use our PowerFX function called count rows inside of the two curly brackets. Again, anytime that we're doing something dynamic, whether it's pulling in a variable, using a power FX function, anything like that, it needs to be in two curly brackets when we're using string interpolation. So I'll do count rows, I'll point it to our gallery one, and we'll do dot all items. Now you see it pulled in that value there. And I can simply finish this out by putting in some more hard-coded text. So I can see you have two outstanding issues. This string interpolation approach also respects the ability to have your text on multiple lines. So we don't have to worry about doing any special character stuff here. If I want to have text on a separate line, all I have to do is say go before this outstanding issues text. Do a shift enter in the formula bar on my keyboard. And now that data is in a new line. And of course, in string interpolation, we can have multiple dynamic values in a given text string. So I can add in another label here just to show you. We'll do our dollar sign, open and close double quote. I'll say welcome. We'll pull in our username again. So I'm going to do user dot full name. Close that curly bracket there. And I can say you have, and I can combine everything here. And I'll pull in the count rows again. So I'll do an open and close curly bracket. We'll say count rows, gallery one, dot all items. And then we'll just type in open issues today. So there you have it, a pretty simple concept here. Just yet another approach, another method that we can use for mixing and matching dynamic content and hard-coded content values in our strings. Really interested to hear what you think about this new string interpolation capability. Wondering if you're gonna be using it or if you're gonna be sticking with the concatenate and the ampersand approach to manipulating your strings. Drop a note in the comments and let me know what you think. And as always, if you did find this video helpful, please do me a favor and support the channel by hitting that thumbs up button. Thanks so much and I'll catch you in the next video.